Hi, Mick Make Mail Number 10 has a couple of new things. Plus, I check out two items from a previous mailbag because I haven't really had time to do a full review. So last week I asked all my patrons and subs to vote to see if I should make the weekly roundup every two weeks. This will enable me to do more project related videos and make the mailbag segment a regular thing where you get to see some of the stuff I get actually working. So take it away Mick. Hey, what do you call somebody without a nose? Uh, I don't know. Nobody knows. So Mick make mail number 10. Uh, we've got two packages this time. Not a heck of a lot, but uh, let's get stuck into it. So this one uh, is the GPS clock. A fellow from Geppetto Electronics called Nick Sayer sent me this to do a quick review on. Uh, and this is the GPS clock. This is the latest design. Um, that's going to replace the current one that's in, in the store. So he sent me the non-kit version. So I think it's got several uh, versions. One is the, the kit version and this one is uh, pre-configured. So uh, you need a, a DC power jack um, and a, a GPS aerial and it'll sink in. Apparently it sinks to 100 microseconds which is pretty nice. It's got a super cap on board uh, which keeps the satellite configuration for three quarters of an hour I think it is. Um, also supports active antennas uh, which is nice. Daylight saving rules. It's also got a tenth of a second display too, and the display refreshes at 600 kilohertz. So, in slow motion, it should be fairly flicker-free. Quite an interesting clock. So, um, let's power it up and see how it goes. So, this is uh, one of the problems I get. Uh, I get given a US power pack, uh, which is uh, not for not for Australia. Uh, but the really good thing about this is most power packs are to uh, go up to 240 volts AC, uh, which is uh, what Australia is running. What I tend to do is just bend the pins out at, at the 45 degree angle. So I know it's a bit dodgy, but it actually works pretty well. So that's all we have to do is just sort of match up Uh, the other thing, of course, is I could always just get a, a power supply that actually um, that actually works. So that's pretty much it. And uh, then I'll plug it in and see how it goes. So there we go. No GPS, of course, we don't have an aerial. So there's a strange. Um, I still couldn't get a GPS lock even though I left it out there for some time. So I don't know what the issue is with this. Uh, I suspect that this is the, the latest update of a newer model. And um, maybe, I don't know, something wrong with it. Southern Hemisphere or something like that. I don't know. <clears throat> but uh, let's crack it open and see. See what it looks like on the inside. So it's fairly well made. Um, it's you know, fairly rugged. It's well made. I think he's um, probably hand soldered it himself. I'm not sure. Um, but I think I'll have to send him an email and find out why it's not working. It's just definitely not getting a GPS lock. The main chip that he's got on, on here is the uh, Skytrax, um, which is a Venus 838 uh, MCU. So, not sure. I'll need to look up the uh, specs on it, whether uh, there's a way of uh, kind of reprogramming it. Uh, but I'll send him an email and see. Uh, I'll have to do another update on this one. Once I get a response back from from Nick, it's a shame it didn't work straight away. Um, <clears throat> I was looking forward to that. So the next one comes from the Hard Kernel guys. Um, I didn't have an Odroid XU4, and I've just released a Odroid XU4Q, which is the quiet version. So um, here it is, and uh, this is the the heatsink, the so-called quiet heatsink. Um, and I ordered a case as well. Um, and just, oh, that's just power supply. And I think I might have, yes, the same issue. Well, it seems to be uh, a common thread with me. It's, I just order whatever power pack uh, is available. I get given a whole bunch of power packs and of course, you know, get the wrong one. It's my fault, but anyway. Um, 
So this, everyone's seen a Odroid XU4. It's been around for a long time. So I ordered this uh, with the, the active fan so I could test out the performance difference between this and having the, the quiet fan. So apparently Odroid have put up some benchmarks on their website. It takes 16% longer to perform a sysbench benchmark when you're running the Odroid at uh, 2 gigahertz. So I'd like to run my own tests on Phronix and if I've got some time next week I'll publish the results of that. So that'll be good to get into. Um, what else do we have? So these next ones, my uh, son already opened uh, already. These ones came from IC Station and these are the DigiSpark AT Tiny 85. So pretty much all it is is an AT Tiny 85 and a 7805 5 volt voltage regulator. Not the most efficient way of uh, providing 5 volts because you get about a 56% efficiency. Um, so you can chuck in I think 7 to 35 volts uh, on this side. So it's quite a handy little board, you know, if you want to if you want to chuck in a car or chuck 9 volts onto it and have have it do something then it's pretty good. Um, it's fairly tricky to program because two of the pins, uh, pin 2 and pin 3, share the USB positive and minus pin. So if you've got something that pulls a high or low on those pins you won't be able to program it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's give it a whirl. Um, I might chuck some LEDs onto a board and program it up and see how it goes. So let's see if I can get a little LED flashing on this and see how these uh, little AT tinies work. A good way of telling which way around to put an LED, um, there's two ways of telling, the long end and the flat uh, side to the LED. The high side and this is the low side. Uh, so another way of looking at it is the LED will block any current coming from this way so the flat side is like a wall. Uh, so since um, putting on the GPO port here um, it'll be the high side and of course the LED just limits the, uh, the current coming out of the uh, GPO port. The other thing is you'll need USB extending cable which is pretty simple you can pick those up. Saves having to chuck it into the side of your uh, PC. So let's uh, plug it in and see what it looks like. Doesn't seem to be any sort of default code on this this one. Oh, okay, there we go. Looks like they've loaded up with a, a basic LED flasher. So I just load up the correct board from the board manager, which is the DigiSpark uh, 1 meg, or you can use two, 1 meg or 8 meg. Then hit the upload button, and you should see this message come up on the uh, Arduino IDE display. Then attach the DigiSpark, and it'll go off and program. So I've added um, a whole of LEDs here, uh, so programming is pretty simple. Yeah, it seems to work. Nice little board. So this was from one of my previous Micmac mail segments. I just haven't had time to really go through and review uh, this particular monthly electronics club. So I thought I'd just give it a quick review in this. Uh, you can make the mail segment. So it's fairly decent. You get a whole range of components you can use. So this one is the advanced kit. So you're getting an LCD screen. What else do we have? Uh, LEDs, a uh, little programmer. So we've got an ATtiny 13. Yeah, it's an ATtiny 13. And a 4094. Uh, what's a 4094? Oh, I think that might be a shift register. So that'd be quite interesting. Let's. Uh, have a look and see what we're going to be making with this one. Let's go to Tron Club website. So once you log into the website, uh, you enter in, uh, they'll give you a little card with a code on it. Uh, you can unlock the, the features. So I unlocked AT Tiny 13 booklet. Seems to be taking a while to load actually. Okay, so welcome page, basic instructions on how to connect up your AT Tiny 13. 
We've got timer interrupts, uh, button interrupts, pin package. Yeah, it seems to be fairly complete. Uh, yeah, interrupts, more interrupts, switch debounce, counting buttons, uh, shift registers. That's 49, 40 ADCs, LCD, uh, bit mode counter. Yeah, it seems to be a fairly complete package. Um, okay, might get stuck into one of the projects and see how I go. Okay, that's strange. We're ending up with uh, not the right colours left over. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, so let's plug it in and program it up. So uh, first of all, you'll need to download Crosspack, which is just another way to program your AT Tiny 13 uh, instead of using the Arduino IDE. Installing it's pretty straightforward. Of course, on the Mac, you'll need to allow it to run from the security tab of preferences. Once installed make sure you update your path environment variable and then run make to build the tutorial program. You can check that it's recognizable on your PC or Mac by typing in this command or just type in make flash to flash it. Simple. I don't know if you can see it but yeah, it seems to work. I'm going to adjust the brightness of this thing, so it's pretty fancy. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So in terms of this monthly electronics club, it seems to be fairly good. Uh, they've got a fairly complete website. It does take a little bit of a while to load, that's an issue. Uh, the other problem is that these patch cables that they provide you with, they're not the right colours compared to what they have on the, on the website, so you have to be a little bit creative with that. Apart from that, Everything, all the instructions are fairly decent. I'd look at joining up to the club if you find it interesting. Uh, I didn't try out the beginner's kit, but I tried out one of the projects on the advanced kit and it seems to be working quite well. So there you go, that's the Tron Club. So that about wraps it up for this week's Mick Make Mail segment. Thanks for watching, see you next week.